Welcome to the Luca Dino Show, where we can learn to reimagine our lifestyle. Today we're going to talk about something called visceral fat. That's V-I-S-C-E-R-A-L fat. You see, all kinds of fat aren't equal. It's good to have fat. The human body needs some amount of fat. And this is different for everyone. It depends on where you're living in cold countries. It depends on your physical constitution. Everyone is different. So you cannot compare uh, one person with another. Now, visceral fat is a type of fat that's stored within the abdominal cavity. So this is located next to several vital organs, the intestines, the stomach, the liver. Visceral fat can also build up in your arteries, leading to cardiovascular problems. Visceral fat is also known, sometimes referred to as active fat, because it can increase the risk of several uh, diseases and health problems. So you may have belly fat. Now belly fat is not always visceral fat, because belly fat can be subcutaneous fat, which is stored just under the skin. So you may see someone or you may find a little bit of fat in your body around your abdominal area. It's not necessary <clears throat> that it is visceral fat. Sometimes you'll see fat on your arms, on your legs. It's easier to see. That's body fat. Visceral fat is mainly inside the abdominal cavity and it cannot really be seen. The more complicated ways of determining if you have visceral fat is usually with a CT or an MRI scan. But <clears throat> these are expensive and uh, time consuming procedures. But usually how you can determine you how you can determine visceral fat is remember this according to research 10 percent of all of our fat in the body will be visceral fat so now if you take your total body fat percentage you minus 10 percent away and then you can probably estimate how much of visceral fat you usually have so research from harvard shows us that in a woman if your waist measures 35 inches or larger that could be a problem that could be a problem and you're at risk from suffering from problems due to visceral fat. And men are at risk for health problems when their waist measures 40 inches or larger. So this is some of the research that comes in from Howard to probably give us benchmarks of, you know, whether we have visceral fat or not. So you can't really measure your visceral fat percentage at home, but usually you can go to clinics or you can go to gyms that check your fat percentage. Now, what we're going to understand straight away is the complications of this. Doctors around the world, your integrative functional medicine experts as well, your nutritionists will always, always try to help you and encourage you to lose excessive body fat from your body because a lot of it could be the wrong fat, like we said, visceral fat. The number one problem is its ability to increase insulin resistance. Now, this is a huge problem. Even if you've never had diabetes or prediabetes, you can be having insulin resistance because of visceral fat, which is why when people come to us with insulin resistance problems or prediabetes or diabetes, it is very important that while you treat the symptoms of diabetes, we also address root causes like insulin insensitivity or insulin resistance, and we help we encourage and we coach those people to start losing excessive body fat because if we can lose excessive body fat and some of it is visceral fat you can decrease insulin resistance <clears throat> more and more research is showing us that visceral fat contributes to insulin resistance studies suggest it's because visceral fat secretes retinol binding proteins that's a 4 rbp4 this is a protein that actually increases insulin resistance so that's one complication, pre-diabetes, diabetes, or if you have diabetes, because when we have diabetes and insulin, if you're on insulin, it's quite difficult for you to lose body fat. We need to understand, okay, all the fat diets existing out there, all the fat exercise programs, the easiest way to lose fat, to unlock the fat cells so that fat can really burn or get metabolized is when insulin levels are low. Not too low, but they're low. They're not constantly high, they're not constantly spiked up. That's why diabetics who are on insulin or people who have diabetes have excessive body fat and they struggle to lose that fat. The key is in bringing down insulin so that you can open up the fat cells and burn that fat. So now the second thing, visceral fat can raise blood pressure very quickly. So we need to understand that people with high blood pressure, it is important for them if they're carrying excessive weight to look at burning fat, losing fat, very important. Okay, now it's involved. Visceral fat today is linked with heart attacks and heart disease. We've already understood that. Type 2 diabetes, stroke, 
breast cancers, colorectal cancers, Alzheimer's disease. So you see, body fat isn't a bad thing. We're not here to get people to have a size zero figure or six pack ab, no. You can have body fat. There are a lot of people who have more body fat, but the problem is what kind of fat are you carrying? Now, what are some of the ways that we can get rid of visceral fat? Another, another complication that comes up, how it affects organs like the liver, how it affects digestion, how it affects the intestines, and it affects hormones, hormone balance as well. There are enzymes that are produced by the pancreas to help you digest your carbohydrates, your fats, and your proteins. Even that can get affected. So maintaining your body fat percentage, getting rid of visceral fat is extremely important. Now, visceral fat is extremely receptive to clean nutrition, not overeating, chewing your food, minimizing junk, white sugar, white flours. Exercise plays a huge role in burning visceral fat. Fasted workouts, of course, always make an informed decision before you do a fasted workout, especially if you already have very low blood sugar levels or low blood pressure, or if you're doing very heavy weight training and it could cause you to you know, lose energy in between and faint, that could be dangerous. But fasted workouts are beautiful. If you've never done a fasted workout before, wake up in the morning, hopefully you've not eaten for 12 to 13 hours, maybe start off by with a one hour walk. Okay, one hour walk on an empty stomach. So your blood sugar levels are already low. And what happens is you start working out, your body needs more energy. So your insulin drops further and you open up your fat cells to burn. You can then start off once you're comfortable with walks, you can start off with push-ups, with body weight squats. You can do a whole body weight circuit training program before you actually move into something more intensive like lifting heavy weights. So exercise plays a huge role. Whether you're cycling, you're running, you're circuit training, you're lifting weights, you're doing uh, <clears throat> a weight training, it'll help you to burn fat faster. Now the trick is having a combination of cardio and anaerobic exercises. So you do, uh, you do your aerobic exercises and you do your anaerobic exercises. You can do this on alternate days. Some people prefer it on the same day. They'll do 30 minutes of weight training and they'll do 30 minutes of cardio or they start off with 30 minutes of cardio and then they do 30 minutes of weight training. That is completely up to you. Yoga, yoga is also great for this but it's a little bit slower and the calorie burn is a little bit slower. So if you're really looking at burning fat, you can do yoga, it's great for you. You can do it every day, a couple of asanas, but you must have cardio and you must have anaerobic exercises as well. It could be lifting weights or your own body weight. Coming back to diet, it is extremely, extremely important for you to understand how a healthy, well-balanced diet that suits your uniqueness, the kind of work that you do, the kind of family history that you have, the metabolic rate of your body. So the easiest way to start off eating clean is by eliminating processed foods, high sugar foods, refined foods, including more lean protein, including more vegetables. One or two fruits is fantastic. Do not overdo it on fruits because a lot of people have fructose malabsorption problems that also increase the amount of your body fat. So you wanna to stick to your low GI fruits, which are more, mostly your berry family, your apples and your pears. And you wanna stay away from things like bananas, custard apples, chikus. You can have them once in a way. Okay, they're not bad fruits. They're loaded with micronutrients, but just when you're trying to lower your blood sugar levels or lower body fat, you wanna stick with lower GI fruits. You want to have complex carbs such as sweet potatoes, your beans, all of your legumes, your lentils if you're not allergic to them. You know, dropping your overall carbohydrate intake could be very helpful for most people to lose fat. This doesn't mean you stay hungry. When you drop your carb intake, you increase your fibers, your vegetables, your proteins, your fats, your good fats like your nuts and your seeds, your cold pressed oils, a mix of monounsaturated oils like your avocado oils and your olive oils are fantastic for your health and your saturated oils could be oils like coconut oil, PO ghee. It's very important to understand that refined oils are destructive to human health. So we got to be careful of that. Now, going back to uh, training, I wanted to talk about strength training, which is weightlifting, like we said, or using your own body weight. We need to understand that the beauty of this is as your muscles get stronger, your muscles or muscle tone requires a lot of energy to keep the muscle in place. And that's how you can burn calories even when you're sitting, even when you're sleeping, even when you're doing nothing, when you strength train, when you build muscle. I'm not saying you gotta build big muscle, I'm talking about muscle tone. 
So coming back to diet, there's a, there are several foods which are thermogenic in nature that can help you to burn fat even when you're sitting, even when you're sleeping. So those are foods like raw cacao, great quality dark chocolate. Then you have your green teas, you have your matcha teas, you have your uh, your Earl Grey teas. These are foods that really, they're, they're nutrient dense and it requires a lot of energy to break these foods down for you. So those are some examples of your food. It's extremely important for you to do your regular checkups. Okay, if you're over the age of 30 or 35, you know, once a year you want to do your your uh, 2D echo, you want to do your stress test, and especially if you're obese, or like I said, if you're a man and your waist is more than 40 inches, you're a woman and your waist is more than 35 inches, you may want to see your specialist to start determining how you could get your blood work down, see if you have any issues like your triglycerides are high, your HDL, which is the good cholesterol, is on the lower side, you have any signs of pre-diabetes because prevention is always better than cure. It's as simple as that. And the sooner we find this out, the sooner we can inspire ourselves to make lifestyle changes so that we can start to lose that fat, burn that fat, and reduce your visceral fat. Is it possible you can, you can get rid of visceral fat? Absolutely, yes. Visceral fat has happened because we've been sedentary and eating the wrong food. Or we're eating good food, but we're sedentary. Or we're active, but we're eating the wrong food. Two other things which science shows us today, your visceral fat also increases with your stress levels because of the hormone cortisol. So cortisol is a great hormone for us, so is adrenaline. It helps sustain the fight and flight response, come out of it, it's great for us, but the problem is when we have elevated levels of cortisol and adrenaline throughout the day because we're chronically stressed or we're in an environment where the stress is so much that cortisol is high all the time. So the higher the cortisol, the more visceral fat you can have, and remember, People may say, hey, you look thin, you look fit, but you cannot see visceral fat. It's in your abdominal cavity. So you gotta be, you have to understand that even thin people can have visceral fat. It's not just, it's just, it's just, it's just not someone who appears to be visibly, visibly, you know, uh, pleasantly plump or with excessive fat on their body. It could be even thin people. So stress, chronic stress is a contributor to visceral fat. And you need to understand the more fat we have in our body, the more hormonal imbalance we have. See, more fat requires blood circulation to all these new fat cells. They become storage cells for estrogen. The more estrogen a man or a woman carries, the more complications we have with fibroids, with cysts, with our prostate, with, um, with estrogen re receptive positive cancers and all of that stuff. So the whole idea is you can have excessive fat, but if it's too much that it's causing you problems, Okay, it's always good for us to understand, is it my lifestyle that's causing me to have all of this fat? Some people genetically have more fat than other people and they're absolutely fine. Their tests are fine, their blood work is fine, they have no disease at all. But understand, if you know that you're putting on weight and fat because of your poor lifestyle, you gotta change that. That brings me to the final point, sleep. Again, sleep deprivation is directly, directly connected with fat gain, visceral fat, fat gain. We need to understand that today. This is a scientifically and medically documented phenomenon. The connection, and there are so many connections. Again, when you sleep deprived, you have more inflammation. When you sleep deprived, you wake up with a hormonal imbalance. Your progesterone can be low. Your testosterone can be low, which is why you lose muscle mass and increase your body fat. It's also today linked with melatonin. So we produce melatonin in our, in, a melatonin in, in our pineal gland while we sleep. But if we're not sleeping well, we're awake late at night, we're watching television, looking at screens, and blue light suppresses the production of melatonin. That again is linked with fat gain, visceral fat gain. So you see it all comes down and that the lifestyle, and that is why lifestyle matters mm -hmm. when it comes to visceral fat. Unfortunately, there's no medication, there's no allopathic medication available for you to get rid of visceral fat. It comes down only to your lifestyle. I hope the session helps you. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep, and remember you care, it's all about you. Stay tuned for more. We're gonna continue our journey, learning, sharing, and evolving.